Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Amir Zand. Now, he's based in Istanbul, Turkey. Ooh, he's an illustrator slash concept artist. Um, and he does a lot of, you know, concept art, obviously, for film. And I've seen him done, like, a lot of covers for uh, books and shit. <laughs> um, he kind of reminds me of Sparse. Like, most of his work is actually very... Uh, um, I would put him in the category of Sparth, where they're very fast, I guess, and they're more of environment artists than anything else, right? Although, even though I find his work pretty good, I'm only going to f focus on a couple of his pieces just because um, uh, they're the ones that like the ones that I'm going to point out to you are the ones that really kind of um, pull my soul. You know what I mean? And they also have, thankfully, um, tutorials. He did like tutorials for 3D Total. Um, and I will be linking the articles and stuff in the description below for these pieces. I, I think I only have like four um, pieces, right? Um, but they're pretty but they're pretty good I do recommend you actually read the article for each of these um, tutorials just because he explains it uh, much better and it's going to be way more clear just because he actually wrote it down right but uh, I did get uh, or got a few takeaways from reading um, the tutorial so anyway yeah so we're going to be ignoring or I am going to be ignoring the majority of his work right we're just going to be focusing on a few that um, and the reason why I like these few is because um, um, I do want to paint faster and as much as I want to paint for longer sessions like um, like for maybe one hour maybe two hours or maybe one and a half um, I'm kind of modeling my speed off of um, Anthony Jones and John Wall and Liberto um, John Wallen Liberto likes to go for about two hours. I've seen a couple of his uh, um, vids and that's kind of like a, a good pace for me. It's kind of enough, but I also want to be I obviously want to spend less time painting right just because I'm lazy um, Or I just want to be more efficient, right? That's, that's, that's a more politically correct term. Uh, I want to be more efficient, right? So one hour if you check out Anthony Jones's channel He generally paints for one hour for one hour Maybe he'll go like for an extra 20 minutes, but he has like a standard one hour painting session, right? Now, but I also want to couple that with like speed paintings because I feel like you can learn a lot by sketching and by doing fast stuff because you can fail faster. It gives you more opportunity to make mistakes and to learn fast and to be a bit more efficient, right? Um, so it, it's good to kind of do both. So I, I do want to couple speed paintings with a kind of a standard painting session um, and I'm going to be doing that for the art demos for the most part because um, that's where I can actually share my process and uh, anyway uh, for Amir Zan I do like this piece this piece um, this piece this piece now this one is not really um, it's a bit stylized for me but the reason why I chose this was because it also does have a tutorial on the 3D Total website. So, you know, he, he discusses the, the way he uses color or how he kind of generates thumbnails and then how he uses um, some of the adjustment layers to kind of um, achieve this kind of color ring of the grayscale kind of sketch in the beginning, right? Anyway. I, I do like these ones, uh, especially this this one, this one, this one, and this one. Just because they're more opaque. If you look at the brush strokes, it's way more kind of painterly, which I do like. This one is uh, it's kind of still painterly, but um, yeah, it's okay. Um, I do like the kind of textured look to it, and it feels very um, just artistic, uh, and it's not too like because if you check out his you know his portfolio. It's a bit sharp in the edges, but here you can actually soften things up a bit. I mean, it's still going to look rather graphical because you're going to, you, you can see like the clear um, sections 
of the composition however just because of the brushes being used and and uh, it's just going to look more natural and more kind of artistic more painterly and it, it will have that kind of natural feel right um, and what's so cool about the tutorial is that he does explain it you know obviously step by step right and he kind of goes with the uh, sometimes we'll do like a thumbnail like a series of thumbnails like for this piece right but for this kind of uh scout mech they actually just started with a plain white canvas and then he kind of figured it out as he goes or as he went sorry and uh, that's usually the way i would do things he's kind of like a john wally liberator in a way where it, it's he doesn't do like a bunch of thumbnails or at least in his tutorials right uh, that i've bought he just kind of figures it out as he goes through the painting uh, layer by layer um, Amir Zan actually likes to uh, layer or section his uh, paintings in Photoshop just because he'll do like a lot of adjustments and he'll actually do like a lot of erasing in the um, in his painting sessions, right? So it actually helps if you layer your shit together and it doesn't do like a lot, I guess, of layering just enough to kind of um, separate, say, this mech from the, the background or the sky from this kind of foreground area uh, these soldiers right here from each other right but uh, look at how it's not that defined not fully detailed but it's kind of enough right as a concept it looks good to me and again it does have that natural feel to it right and now this for this make even though it's kind of sharp right uh, it's not like this where it's more textured in the edges even though it's still kind of sharp in some areas, it still has a kind of painterly kind of feel to it. Um, it's still rather impressionistic, which I do like. It's very kind of just raw and just direct. And again, it's a speed painting. It's meant to be fast. And I want to do more of that in this uh, channel. And not just for this channel, but for my own personal development as an artist. I do think you need a couple uh, things. Like, you need to do like quick sketches, like more like um, thumbnails and stuff like that you also need to do like speed paintings and it's also good to have like longer painting sessions for me three hours is a bit too long for me and also you know if you're trying to record your shit it's that's too much a uh, rendering time right unless you're doing it live that's fine but uh, like on YouTube but for me I like to actually uh, do some edits just some basic editing so three hours is just too long for rendering time for me um, but yeah so he just kind of established where the, the sky would be in the beginning, right? And then he kind of uh, established the mech. And then sometimes he'll reframe the, or recrop the whole canvas to kind of make it more sensible for the composition. Because it won't al you won't always get it right in the beginning. So you can always adjust as you go or change things as you go. And I do like this sort of um, process, usually. Just because it's more flowy, you know, you don't have to know everything in the beginning. You just need to know, like, just one thing. Um, the, the horizon line will be here, and then there will be some kind of mech. And in, in the article, which I will link, um, he does, like, a, he, he changes it. I think it started as a very small kind of mech, and then he kind of expanded it as he went, right? And then for his coloring, he's not that... Uh, he actually starts out his paintings with a grayscale painting where it's mostly about the values, the contrast. And you can determine a lot. You can already tell the story in this kind of phase, right? And then from there, um, he'll use actually the color balance kind of uh, adjustment to kind of play with the shadows and then to play with the highlights as well because you can actually target the shadows, the highlights, or the kind of midtones. When you're doing the adjustment layers thing um not just for the color balance but for hue and saturation and stuff like that and then after each kind of adjustment layer whether it be color balance or something like that um he'll actually do a paint over and then he'll do like a another color balance i think um for example for these blues they this these did not exist and then he just kind of painted it in right and that's pretty cool um 
And for speed paintings, it even though it looks kind of painterly just because of the brushes being used, like you can see the kind of uh, just the, the the edges of it aren't too sharp. It's still rather graphical because it's very shape heavy. It's not fully rendered, like you can't see the entire um form of it. Like there, it, it's not a it, it doesn't have a big value range, right? For example, for this mech, it's it's only a couple of values, right? It's not a plain graphic shape. It does have a bit of, you know, suggestion of form, but it's not super strong. So it's kind of a mix of both. And it's, by being graphical, you're actually kind of saving time. You could use it for more, maybe if you're trying to just focus, focus on some kind of style. So th th it makes sense if you're trying to go for, if you're going for a graphical look, you know, obviously you'll go for a graphical approaches, right? But if you, if you want to just save time, you don't have to, again, render everything to the T, right? Um, you can just kind of uh, do quick paintings. You can do speed paintings like this, right? And I think he uh, he kind of made two versions. I, I think the sunset kind of version was a bit too strong. So I decided to go for a... Um, sorry about that. A moonlit kind of scene, right? And I think to kind of achieve this kind of blue and red thing, he used a hue and saturation filter and then our adjustment layer and then he made the new layer, set it on soft light or overlay to kind of just brighten or make this blue part bluer and this red part redder, right? So his favorite thing to use is the color balance um, adjustment layer or adjustments and the the overlay and soft light uh, blending modes. Um, now for this piece, I, I didn't actually review the uh, or read too much of the article, but it's probably it uses the same kind of um, uh, coloring uh, method just because that's kind of his thing. Like he does mention that his very like it's what he's known for, I guess, and you can tell by his portfolio, it's very very colorful. It's not like toned down and boring. It's pretty bright, right? And you'll notice in his work, he just leaves, uh, he'll do a first color pass and then everything else kind of submits to that main color kind of pass. For example, the main colors here are actually red, right? It's kind of orange red. And then everything else is kind of a complement to that, right? Same thing for this one. Everything else is under green or yellow. Um, and everything, it, it, his work tends to look kind of monochromatic, is that the word? Or analogous, right? Um... You can always like do extra layers to kind of color things to add some accent colors and shit, but you don't need to. Um, I, it really depends on your um, requirements, right, for the project. But uh, yeah, when it comes to speed paintings, I do recommend you check out these paintings of Amir Zand. And actually, I do recommend you read his um, tutorials on the uh, 3D Total website just because you'll get a better understanding of his process. And you'll hear it from him, right? And uh, now this one, he doesn't have a tutorial for this one, but I think he does sell this as a print. So I do recommend you follow him on ArtStation and buy maybe a print or two, right? This one looks pretty epic, right? Um, I used to think he would use the, uh, the gradient map kind of uh, adjustment layer, but he likes to go for the color balance. So that's pretty, uh, that's a cool thing to kind of uh, understand realize right um, yeah so I do recommend just kind of a side note do like speed paintings and that's more of a recommendation for me actually <laughs> just because yeah I need to learn in different ways so if you're trying to learn speed painting or you want to get inspired check out Amir Zan's work and I I'd recommend this piece the new moon piece the scout uh, piece this Martians pe uh, piece and this hunting in the moonlight piece and maybe this guy too <laughs> um, but yeah look at this right it's awesome and they could actually even though they're speed paintings they could be sold as prints right they look good as um, print for me even this one can be, maybe with a bit more development perhaps, but now this one looks way more printerly, like it could be like a, 
sold as an actual kind of print, right? Especially this one, because this one is actually sold as a print. So that's it for this quick video of Amir Zahn's work. Um, and these are my favorite pieces of his. And uh, yeah. Keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.